Hey y'all, I'm gonna have to talk kind of low because I'm in the airport and thanks to Apple's lovely technology and I had dinner so now I have completely chopped up my lipstick. Thanks to Apple's lovely, um, and y'all let me know if you can hear me or not because I don't want to be that loud person in the airport. So I'm gonna hold this fairly close to me because everybody's talking around me. Melissa, can you hear me? Hit the love button or say something if you can hear me because I'm in the airport and I can't use my microphone or my headset because I'm trying to charge my phone. But I just want to tell you all, I'm like my video froze earlier today because I have had some very interesting phone calls, emails, and customers, um, and Facebook posts. And I don't know, I think it's because Venus is in retrograde. But let me explain something to y'all about this world in which we live. People are fucked, okay? We were laughing because this one girl, try, and I'm about to bring the phone real close because these people are loud as shit. I'm going to be quiet for a second so the announcement can finish. But let me know if like, you guys can hear me, okay? Just, just let me know if you can't hear me. So earlier today, I was doing a Facebook Live about customers calling me, asking me questions that they already know the answer to, asking for refunds because their credit card got hacked after they made a legitimate purchase on my website, crazy stuff like that. And now just on my wall, I noticed that um, somebody got mad because I posted a dragging somebody got for insulting somebody's lazy eye. I have a lazy eye. I'm sensitive about that shit. And yeah, the way they dragged Becky for insulting a beautiful sister, it was epic and it's on my wall. But another black woman had an issue with the fact that I posted the drag. And I just want to ask y'all about this for a minute. You know, while I'm sitting here charging my phone, being bored, my flight's delayed. Where is it? You know what? I know what it is. It's Christian ideology. That we have to be nice to people that are not nice to us. Okay? And I, I don't know. Even when I was a Christian, I didn't follow that philosophy. Um, you know, I respect people who respect me. Respect is earned. Respect is something that you just can't give away carte blanche because somebody might treat you right. That girl can't really eat a dick because I don't think she read correctly. And, you know, I did. Um, let's let's back up here. I did think about it before I shared it because the dragging that that woman got for insulting another woman was so fucking epic. It hurt my feelings and sometimes, <laughs> but that shit made my afternoon. And what I do is I live to serve. And so I wanted to make y'all's afternoon. It is still on my wall. It is still posted and old girl deserved it. How are you going to come in on somebody else's post that is actually complimenting somebody and insult them? She deserved the dragging. So let's talk about niceness. You know, if any of you all have, she should have. That was ignorant and that was ridiculous. And she, she had no business doing that. She had no business insulting that woman like that. So she got what she had coming. And see, people always want to talk about karma. They always want to latch on to religions they know nothing about. And karma ain't got shit to do with what goes around, comes around. Well, what went around came around today on that post. Oh my God, you will die. You will die. You will choke on your food. Do not drink. Do not eat anything. It's like the second comment. Her name is Brooke. And she made a comment about this girl having a lazy eye and she didn't. And the dragging that took place after that. Because this no lip, ashy ass, negro dating white girl had the nerve to insult a beautiful black woman. And I was there for all of it. So this is the bottom line. Um, you know, being nice to somebody is basically telling somebody what they want to hear when they want to hear it. I'm not nice. I tell the truth. And if it's funny, it's funny. But being kind is something completely different. And I think that, um, yes, that dragging was epic. It was, I live for shit like that, okay? Because I am, I and I'm, you know me. Yeah, I don't never lie about who I am or how I am. And being a priestess, I do, I did think about that for a minute. I'm like, do I really want to post this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Because my religion doesn't have those types of rules. And, um, but 
what it does encourage is kindness, charity, caring about other people, doing right by other people. You know, for example, somebody asked me for a refund because after, and this had nothing to do with the purchase that they made on my website, her card got compromised. Now, um, all sales on my website are final. Now, if she had come to me and said, look, sis, I'm in a really bad way because all of my money is tied up because somebody hacked my card and I was wondering if you could give me a refund and then I could order it again at a later date. Now, she did say she was going to order at a later date, but that's not what she said. And I'm just, and, and you know, it has, and I know, I know I'm a psychic. That's another thing. My kids be trying to fool me all the time. Personally, I was not going for it. Um, I believe she just overspent and decided that she didn't want to make that purchase, but that's not my problem. Um, y'all know when somebody comes to me and they're destitute and they're having a hard time, you know, I'll put out my last time. I'll ask my friends to put out their last time to help somebody. But what I ain't going to do is just be nice to somebody for the sake of being nice, especially when they're being a very nasty person. And you come at me wrong, and you come at me nasty, guess what? You're going to get back what you give. I saw this video, and I'm going to tell you, I'll have some restraint. But there is this older white woman messing with this younger black woman outside this Metro PCS. I know you all have seen this video. Finally, old girl just got tired of her talking shit and, and commenced to stomping a mud hole in old girl. And I'm sitting there and my kids are like, you were so fucking ignorant because I'm like, world star. I'm like watching her hand this woman her ass. Although I think she could have fought her better. You know, all this hair pulling ladies come on square up just bust somebody right in their fucking face she could have just knocked her she could have deboed her and it would have been over not all this cat fighting hair pulling bullshit somebody didn't teach these girls how to fight um y'all teach your girls how to fight I, my, my, my cousins taught me how to fight i square up i fight i throw up dukes i guard myself i box and then i fight dirty afterwards once i got you on the ground and no, once I'm not get you on the ground, I'm probably not going to stop whooping your ass. Right. So that's just how I roll. I'm intelligent, educated, um, and I can act like I have some self-restraint. And I tell my daughters that physical violence is not your first resort for anything. Um, even having, um, you know, to the point where you got to cuss somebody out, go off on them, that, that, that should not be your first resort but right let somebody put my their hands on me or mine and they have been instructed that if somebody attacks you that you put your hands back on them and you defend yourself and when the police show up you tell them you were scared for your life yes and hand them the ass whooping that they rightfully deserve because we live in some really bad times y'all it used to be a time where i was um anti-gun um, and I can tell you, there's been several times where I've considered getting one for my home and my protection. Um, people have really changed. People have gotten really out of the pocket, especially on the Internet. See, what you ain't going to do, okay, is get on my wall or anybody else's wall, especially if you want to mine, and talk off the side of your neck. Because, number one, you will be checked. I love it when I'm away from the computer, as I probably will be a lot, um, well, at least from Facebook anyway, this week. Um, when somebody starts some foolishness on my wall, people just jump right in like, bitch, what is your problem? Because they know how I roll. I like my wall to be a place where we laugh, where we're educated. And sometimes, yeah, we are fucking ratchet. Guess why? Because life is ratchet. So, you know, if you don't hang like that, you can hang with me. I have a very uh, sick sense of humor. Um, I like things that nerds like. Um, I will talk about people. Um, I will talk about politics. I will talk about shady ass customers that don't behave properly. Because that's the thing. You know, we have gotten into this thing where the customer is always right. And the customer is the customer. That's what I was taught. So the reality of the matter is you're not going to pull no nonsense on me. I'm going to do everything possible um, I can as a diviner, as a magical supplier, as a priestess. But what I ain't going to do is, number one, your work for you. I don't do a lot of spell work. Why? Because what I find from most clients is they undo it. 
they will do things that are counteractive to the mission of the work. And they can be. And then, but you know what? I had a beautiful um, client uh, letter saying that I was a top-notch businesswoman today. So that kind of like talked talk me off the bridge. Because if we send you something and it's not correct, you get to keep it. And I send you what we, what we should have sent you in the first place. And it could be an expensive item, but it rarely is. But I'll let you keep it, and I'll send you out what we made a mistake with. And most of the time, people are fairly, you know, agreeable with that. You know, just trying to do right by people and run a decent business. But for y'all who are ordering divinations, when you already know the answer to the question, don't waste your money because the reality of the matter is, is when we get into the divination, if you're ordering a divination from me, or anybody that you, you're willing. My divinations are $100. Uh, I'm a psychic. Know that I know that you're going to be on some bullshit. Okay? If you're on some bullshit, um, I'm paid to know that. Okay? So I'm going to say to you, well, why are you continuing to deal with this narcissistic man who has left you and is with somebody else? And why are you worried about spell work? And, you know, a person was telling me she was being harassed. And I'm like, have you filed a restraining order? Have you... You, uh, 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 telephone harassment is harassment. You got text messages. You got proof directly from this man's number that he's harassing you. Because I'm going to tell y'all right now. Yes, I believe in magic. I love magic. I Some days I sit up and I'm like, oh my God. I hope y'all can hear me because airport. But some days I sit up and I think, oh my God, I'm actually doing this. People who have known me all my life really actually think I've lost my mind when it comes to me being a witch. And I can't believe it sometimes myself, but every time a spell works or every time the spirits do something that I ask them to do, I'm mind blown. I'm just like, oh my God. And a lot of times, um, like I said, a lot of times I don't take on people's spell work because I really think that they're not going to work proactively towards making the spell work because there are a lot of mundane things you have to do. You can't ask me to do spiritual work and then turn around and undo it. If you're trying to do, you know, break, cutting cords, breaking ties, cutting clear, but you still go see this person that you're trying to get out of your life, you're, you're not helping it work. So when I do take on spell work clients, I have to be really sure that they're going to cooperate and that the work is going to go as planned. Because even then, sometimes with divination and sometimes with the person completely participating, it doesn't work out exactly how they thought it did. And that doesn't mean that the spell didn't work, but it does mean that the situation had to occur. Sometimes we do have to go through some really tremendous things to really get the lesson. And I think that's another thing that people really miss about why we have trials and tribulations. That was one of my biggest things as a Christian. I couldn't reconcile myself with why do babies die? Why do children get sick? Why are innocent people killed? And when I started looking at things from a different perspective, it, it was a little bit easier to deal with. However, um, it still hurt. But I did realize that this, there's lessons in this. For every single person that is affected by this, there is a lesson. And see, the reality of the matter is the reason why we live in the world in which we live right now is because people refuse to heed the lesson. In fact, people will go as far to tell you that the lesson wasn't true. People will tell you that people that slavery was a choice or that we were happy to be slaves or like there was never any ever slave rebellion here. You know... People will tell you those things because they have not learned the lesson. They have not learned the, the reasons for the tribulation. I am convinced that, you know, while slavery was an abomination, for me personally, hey, Rika, for me personally, it showed me that we can do anything. We can survive 400 years of that and the rest of these years uh, since them surviving damn near impossible circumstances and we still live, survive, and thrive. That, that tells me that I come from an amazing background of people who can conquer the world if they want to. We just got to put that here, you know, because unfortunately, 
due to the TSD, not PTSD, the TSD, traumatic stress dis disorder, that oppressed people all over the planet have continued to endure. It has done something to our psyche and it's made us think that we can't accomplish anything that we'll never do better than where we are right now. I've talked to so many people who have just been beat down by life. That they don't even get to the point of racism. They don't even get to the point of grasping institutional racism and that being actually the lead cause of their poverty, of their marginalization, of their lack of an ability to get a job and a ed decent education. They don't even know that because they're still here living in the pain of all, that is the result of all of those things. So even to get them elevated to the point where they realize there's a reason for this. There's a reason why I'm suffering the way I am. People don't get it. And that's because they haven't been taught. So you got to understand the source of a problem in order to solve it. I don't care if you're medicine, you know, Western medicine, magic, spirit work, regular mundane life. If you don't know the source of a problem, you can't fix it. And so there's a lot of the times that people come to me and they want to get readings and they don't understand the source of the problem. And often the source is the them. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm going to just tell you all right now, um, we don't live in a nice environment. And it's really um, distressing often for me to feel like I got to be on the ready for any bullshit that may pop off because look at all the bullshit that pops off. You know, I think that all of us would much rather live a peaceful life, raise our kids, give them good educations, have them get decent jobs and have a nice place to live and not be abused by their mates or, you know, or other parents or other kids or be bullied. I think that's really just what most people want. I don't care what color you are. But the reality of the matter is, is we got some shit to deal with out here. We have some really nasty individuals that because they are keyboard warriors especially the president of the united states being one of those people they think they can say anything about anybody and people are just going to roll over and accept it but what i thank the world for is black facebook and black twitter who will drag a motherfucker for filth if they think that they can speak just any old way to in to us I, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all whose petty runs as deep as mine, who is not ready to be nice in the face of adversity. You know, our parents, my grandparents, my, my grandmother, she used to get so mad. There's a 20 year age gap between her and my grandfather. My grandfather was born in 1897 on a plantation, the son of the man who owned the plantation. One day, his very own mother just got up, left the plantation. She never come back. She left my grandfather there, compromised plantation, where 12 years a slave, it was based. That's where my grandfather was born. My grandfather was born to smile at people at all times. We wear the mask that grins and lies, that hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we paid to human guile, I can't remember all of that poem, but I used to know it by heart. With torn and bleeding hearts we smile. That was my grandfather. He smiled to save his life. And my grandmother, the red-headed, Afrocentric, uh, big wear, big Afro, big Taurus zodiac sign in the middle of her chest, the original Elizabeth Ruth, she would get mad. She'd be in the car, you know, white man's nigga, always got to smile at them. Now, mind you, she grew up in this town full of white people, and they were very affluent um, and extremely light-skinned. And so it just blew her mind to see her half-white husband smiling at these people and waving and not understanding the burdens under which he grew up where he had to do that to live but we aren't them anymore and I'm not going to do that so when somebody does um, assault me verbally or, or, or physically I'm going to fight back you know I, mean, I think that this we have gotten into this this mentality um, and, and people always want to talk about Gandhi and Mother Teresa, two of the biggest racist monsters that ever walked this earth. Do your research. Gandhi hated black people. Okay. Hated them. Wrote letters pleading to the imperialists that they were better than we were. Okay. And Mother Teresa didn't take that money and heal people. She wanted Jesus to fix them. 
And if you didn't get fixed, then Jesus didn't love you. You didn't love Jesus enough. That's why you died, you know. And, 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 and you have to understand these people are heralded as heroes. Jimmy Carter is 94 years old. And this man is still building houses for Habitat for Humanity. That's your hero. Okay, Malcolm was your hero. Martin was your hero. Mega Evers was your hero. Trayvon Martin is your hero. Sandra Bland is your hero because she dared to be an uppity negress and talk to a police officer and assert her rights. She is dead. These people, a Korean Gaines, is our hero. How you just gonna roll up in my house for nonviolent offenses? Storm my house? Those are our heroes. And so, just taking um, a backseat, now I'm always going to try to talk to someone with some level of politeness. I don't care if it's business or if it's, you know, social media. I, I'm going to give you a minute. In fact, there have been several times on my post where I've said, you might want to rethink what you're about to say. Okay? And I'll tell them because y'all will tear them to shreds. I don't even have to really worry about it. So, you know... I'm not ready to make nice. I love when the Dixie Ticks, Chicks did that. And I love when they say with Beyonce. Because the Dixie Chicks ain't fucking around. They not here for, you know, right. I ain't posting no Mother Teresa or Gandhi quotes. They can kiss the bottom of my yellow ass. That's what they can do. You know, Gandhi, darker than me. I want to talk about Africans. Listen, y'all. I'm not going to hold people in high position or even give them basic respect that don't respect me and mine. I am not. At the very least, I'm not going to say nothing to you. Count yourself lucky if I'm cussing you out. Because a lot of times, I'll put your ass in a jar and you'll never even know it. I, I, don't, even, I don't get on Facebook and announce when I'm doing spell work against someone who's fucked with me. That's stupid. Y'all always posting your spells, too. What's wrong with you? Why are you posting your candle work? Why are you posting your stuff in these groups? Um, you can ask questions about it and stuff. When I use um, pictures in my classes, and that's the only time. I don't even use them on my website. Um, this is work that's been done for years. Okay? Client work that has been worked, done, processed, over, done with. Not something that I'm working on currently. Y'all have to understand, if you understand uh, energy, if you understand science and you understand magic, energy doesn't die. Okay? Um, so, if you want people interfering with the energy of your spell work, well, go right on ahead. Post all you want to. Because I know there's people, and I'm telling you, I've done this, and like the, even the Bible would tell you that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And there are people who I have cursed with my mouth, not even knowing it. So I'm very careful about what I say to people and how I say it to them. And so, therefore, I really think that everybody else should. So, Because I'm going to tell you, there are people who I know have like thrown some real ugly shit, shit in my way spell work shade whatever and i ain't done nothing to them and had the nerve to post their spell work online i'm just gonna sit here and i want y'all to digest that people did sit and talk shit about you post their spells and you can sit there print a picture set that shit on fire step on it put it in your shoe <laughs> you know energy works if you believe in this work you know it does and especially if the work you know, how are you going to be out here hating on everybody else and then you want to post a self-love jar? You know, there are people out here that make you hate yourself. People want to play games, right? You know, yeah, people want to play games. I don't have time for games, but I had time today. I had time for that dry game. And I encourage you all to go to read it. It's like 200 and some comments long and they ate her ass for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for not being nice. It, and now it doesn't take that much to be courteous. It doesn't take that much to be a decent human being. And when I find people in my life who don't know how to be decent human beings, I let them go. I don't do work against people that I don't fuck with no more. Number one, usually those people are their very own enemies. They do enough damage to their lives that I don't have to do a thing but sit there and watch and laugh. But, you know... 
I, I know this don't have time for the foolishness, but I had time for that dragging today because that shit was fat. They, they, see, this is the thing. How are you going to have ugly ass pictures of yourself on the internet and then you going to go and try to talk about somebody else? Woo, they ate her ass up. Now, mind you, I, I'm petty, okay? And I fucks with all of y'all, you know, because I, you know, I fucks with people that have good sense. This chick got on my page and got mad because I shared the dragging. And I'm just like, what's wrong with you? Listen, the bottom line is this. You don't, if you don't have anything nice to say, you shouldn't say anything. Um, in, in, or at least constructive. And I, I posted that this morning. And, you know, this chick accused me of giving uh, convoluted or being, um, what did she call me? Uh, contradictory. I ain't, I'm a lot of motherfucking things. I ain't contradictory. Uh, Y'all know me. If if I don't like something, I'm going to say it. And I usually, depending on the level of offense, will be polite in discussing how I don't like it. And then after a while, it, it never fails. Somebody says some sideways shit. Or, um, you know, it's just like, I'm done talking to you. I'm done talking to you. But usually it goes sideways. Once you go sideways, guess what? I'm going with you. We're going to go all the way sideways. When I have time. And I had time today. Um, so, you know, I'm just saying. If, if you want to avoid being dragged on the internet, you might want to keep your little nasty ass opinions to yourself. I am just as petty as the next one. I saw these two chicks in the grocery store today. And I was like, Damn. Oh my God, they were ugly to me. They were unattractive to me. And I immediately felt bad. I'm like, damn, that's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's mama. You know, and you sitting up here like, damn, they ugly, but they was. But at the same time, I didn't want to take a, I didn't take a picture of them and put it on the internet. And that's what people will do these days. Now, there's one difference between having a personal observation and being in your own petty and then showing the whole fucking world just how ignorant you are. Now, that would have been ignorant if I would have took a picture of these chicks and put it up and be like, damn, they ugly. That's what I'm talking about. That's the difference. We're human beings. We're going to see things we don't like. People are going to say things that we do not agree with. Um, they're going to be, and you should choose your battles carefully. I'm not saying that you shouldn't speak out against injustice. That's not what I'm talking about or not. But the most of the shit that I see y'all devoting your time to on Facebook, and that's another thing. I got people that will read every fucking bullshit post there is out here, especially if it's got to do with a Kardashian or anything else or something horrific. But you can't read the formulation directions and instructions on my website. You can't read the comments in a post that we're, we just made. You, you, I will put up a post literally with the links to how to buy something and it never fails and somebody in the comments will say how do I get it and so now I stop being nice I'll be like if you don't put, go up there and click on them goddamn links just like anybody's mama I'm, I'm, go click on the goddamn links you want to call me auntie get up there and click them goddamn links and leave me the fuck alone and I'm serious. That's how you go get answered from now on. And you know what really kills me? Because I really had to stop and think about this, y'all. I really did as a person who has a business. And it's, you know, it's, it's being, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying the business. It, it, it can be hard a lot. If I didn't have my oldest daughter and I tell her this every day, if I didn't have you, I'd probably close. Because I couldn't give my customers the quality that I want to give them and still have this full-time job because a bitch needs health benefits. I'm on my way to my full-time job at now. That's why I'm in the airport because I go to my full-time job once a year. I work at home. But I couldn't give you guys the quality without help from her or people like Melissa Kennedy who does a lot of back-end stuff for me or Tiffany um, Nicole Ware who comes over when everybody else fakes me out. Okay, wouldn't make it without them. But what I will tell you is um, I had to think about, like, how I wanted people to envision me as a person. You know, I wanted to be able to stay as true to, <laughs> yeah, they be making me mad, for real, Brittany. I wanted to be as true to me as a human being because when I first started out and I worked for my mentors, that was their business. And there were several times where they were like, okay, I know how you are, 
but we're going to need you to chill because you represent the store. And I had issues with that. I had a lot of issues with that. And after a while, I couldn't do it anymore. I could not represent somebody else's store and sacrifice who I was. So I left. And so I, I'm thinking here, well, you can make or break your business. The way you behave and the way you treat other people is going to make or break your business. You know, and when I hear about um, that, that certain um, appropriator who owns a really, really, really big um, um, online and uh, physical conjure store, you know who I'm talking about. When I hear the stories about how she treats people, her own customers, her clients, her co-workers, when I hear those stories, I'm just like, and, and you still a millionaire and people are still buying that shit from you and you act that way. No, that's, and that's, so I'm not talking about that level, but what I ain't going to do. And I've told people, Oh my God, I can't tell you how many times I've said this and I will say it again tonight. I will burn this whole motherfucker down before I stop being who I am. Who I am is a raging black liberal bisexual witch. That's who I am. I am a voodoo son. I'm a witch. I am a liberal. I am going to fight. I fight for uh, injustice. I've been doing this before the internet was even an afterthought. Okay. I was president of the Black Student Union when I was in college. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. So don't ever get it fucking twisted. I am not going to play nice with you if you are trying to hurt someone else. Now, let's think about that though. Because then you got these people talk. Black people, I'm going to need you to stop calling me talking about this motherfucking law of karma and the rule of three and all this other bullshit that ain't got shit to do with your practice. You ain't Hindu. You don't practice Wicca. So what the fuck are you telling me about karma? The only time you should go after anybody is if they've done something to you. And it shouldn't be something perceived. You better be damn sure of what you're doing. But the bottom line is, a lot of the times people use a lot of those karmetic rules as an excuse not to stand up for themselves. And the question is, like I told you, and we just got to talking about this just a few minutes ago, the legacy of slavery shows me that we can accomplish anything that we want to accomplish, that we can survive anything. Not only can we survive it, we can survive it with a really awesome case of Benjamin Buttons because black don't crack. So at some point when you're coming to me and you're telling me that you're being victimized and you are not doing what the fuck you're supposed to do mundanely and magically to stand up for yourself, I'm not fucking with you because you're a whim. I'm not going to call you a pussy because I have one and my pussy is strong. They birth babies. But you're a wimp. You're a wuss. You're a fucking coward. And sadly, we have been beaten into the position of cowardness. We have been uh, gone through so much trauma and stress that it has caused us to be very cautious that has caused us to smile at every white person that we meet, whether they mean us well or not. And what we need to do is what we need to learn how to do is stand up for ourselves. That has nothing to do with um, being, I don't, I don't even know what you want to call it, because I don't believe in good and bad magic. I believe in what's necessary. I believe in yin and yang. I believe in what's right. I believe in reciprocity. And that is not the same. Reciprocity is what goes around, comes around. And if somebody is hurting you, okay, yeah, I understand. You may not be the type of person who wants to hurt them. And it, yes, it depends on what they're doing. But you at least got to protect yourself. You've got to protect yourself. That's what I'm saying. How are you going to call me and ask me for a spell or what you should buy when you haven't made so much as a police report against somebody who is really terrorizing you? Because, you know, they don't care. I mean, I, I get this. I, I understand the police. What's a restraining order going to do? Well, restraining orders have failed so many of us. I understand that, you know. And then the, the part it really, really gets to me is when someone who is innocent is harassed and murdered. Then they're like, well, they ever did they go to the police? Well, yeah, the young lady who was murdered by her boyfriend went to the police. Restraining order, all that. Facebook told him about what this man had did. He had set her on fire. He had done all kinds of things to her. And nobody did anything to protect that woman. So, but I tell you what... 
I'm going to tell y'all a little story from my past. My first husband slapped me. We were in college. I was in college. I was in grad school, and he slapped me. And when I got my mind right after he hit me, I went and got the Ginsu knives that he had purchased for us when we bought our, when we moved into our apartment. He never hit me again. I didn't cut him. He went running out the house with his pants down around his ankles, though, and I chased him with that butcher knife like y'all ever seen that movie Trilogy of Terror. <laughs> yeah, he never put his hands on me again. So, you know, sadly, I don't know what happened with this young lady, but if she shot his ass the first time he hurt her, he wouldn't have been around to kill her. You know, you can defend yourself. We got to stop laying down and allowing evil people to hurt us um, in every way, shape, or form. It shouldn't be tolerated. We all should be allowed to live in peace. We all should be allowed to live in happiness. Um, it's in the Constitution. I know it wasn't written for us, but we can still use it. And, and we should not be allowing people to abuse us. And the sad part is, is look at what happens when you wait. This man is going to be a Supreme Court Justice. And lots of people believe this woman. He got on the stand and cried like a toddler. He's going to be a Supreme Court Justice. And, you know, sadly, because of the time, like, I'm just like my grandfather, smiling at everybody, waving at everybody, in which this happened, this girl was absolutely terrified to go and tell anybody what this man had done to her. You know, maybe if she had told somebody, maybe, maybe this man wouldn't be a Supreme Court nominee. But guess what? We know, we know that very few rapes are ever reported and very few of them are ever convicted. So I can't blame people because people are not listening. So what we have to do as a people, as the people that we elect into public office, when our children come to us, if, you know, and I'm telling you single mamas, keep these men out of your houses. You know, I have talked to so many women whose mothers, boyfriends, have molested them. Keep them men away from your kids. If they don't have their own house, why are you dating them? They should have their own place to live. If you want to spend time with somebody, don't have them around your kids. Especially until you know them. You know, so you know, you got a lot of people who have actually gone and told their mothers what happened to them and their mothers either didn't believe them or told them to be quiet. But I think that we just have to, we just, we, we're at a point now when we are mistreated in any form, shape, or way, we have to, we have to stand up for ourselves. You're not going to be able to get violence and oppression to go away by sitting still and wishing that you were someplace else or wishing that they would stop. Sometimes you have to make a motherfucker stop. Okay? Sometimes you have to make them stop. So, like I told you, my ex-husband, he hit me one time. He never put his hands on me again because he knew if he did, he would die. And I already told my family. I was just like, look, when I kill him, y'all going to need to go into court and tell everybody that he had been beating my ass for years. I had no shame. We have to get people used to the fact that we are not going to take their bullshit. And I don't care what kind of bullshit it is. You know, we got to start living in peace. And like Malcolm X said, peace by any means necessary, justice by any means necessary. We don't have to put up with people. I don't put up with it on my wall, and neither should you. And that's what happened today, and that's why she got her ass dragged. And our, I encourage you all to go and look at the comments, because I'm about to go look at um, some of them again. I didn't get to look at all of them, but when I tell you I hollered, I hollered. And maybe through that example somebody will realize maybe i shouldn't talk out the side of my neck ever again because everybody's going to remember this chick's name everybody's going to remember her profile everybody's going to remember how she got clowned for being an idiot and i think that should happen more often and then maybe people would be nicer to each other so anyway y'all i'm gonna go watch i'm gonna go read some more of those comments because that was a drag for like the next millennium and hopefully i will get on my plane soon love peace and afro grease keep sending in your orders rakia is there processing things at the house so you know they probably all will ship when i get back later in the week but um yeah the store's still open so talk to you later take care everybody love peace afro grease stay black